Tuzer? What? Where'd you see it, bud? <laughs> he, he's such a love bug. If I've ever gotten annoyed because he's he's needy, my mom says, you did it. You did it to him. <laughs> you made him like this. <laughs> yeah, I did. I really did. Um, Ancients, please make this video for me. <laughs> make it. Record this video for me. When I go to work to, to specifically to clean a house, I ask them to clean the house for me. And it's pretty amazing because it gets me out of my head into more observing. I'm still doing it, but it's more like I'm watching it be done. And it seems like I know it does. It gets done so much more quickly and more efficiently. I can get to a house like the lake house because it's really, really big and start doing doing this thing. Like, where do I start? All of a sudden I'm in one room and then the next and, and I, I'm just like, okay, no, I know that doesn't work. And so then I remember to say, ancients, please clean this house for me. And it's absolutely amazing how much more calm I feel. I get down on myself because yesterday... Well, day before yesterday, on top of the world, my mind was super quiet. I wasn't worried about anything. No emotional, mental storms came in, nothing. And then yesterday, for some reason, I don't know why it happens. I really don't. I feel that if it can be overcome, which it has been overcome by many, many beings throughout history, uh, unnecessary thinking, I will overcome that. They're saying that I'm actually in the process of doing that. It's a process. It's so, it seems like such a long process because it's actually overcoming lifetimes of conditioning. Lifetimes of overthinking. So I shouldn't get... That's just another thought, isn't it? Getting down on myself for getting in a funk. Yesterday, I started thinking about how much I'm working. <laughs> And how tired I am and, and that I don't have my own place. I'm living in my tiny home, which is my own place, but I'm on somebody else's property again, but it's my best friend's property this time. And I am not in position to her at all. We've talked about that. I talked to, to her about how I don't want to feel like, well, like I'm in the way or, you know, I want to stay off the radar and and all that. And she's just like, you're not on the radar. I'm really happy to have you here. It brought up a lot of fear for me because I had a, I had who a person that I thought was my best friend since, since childhood. And no, that no, mm -mm. she used to say to me once in a while, uh, every so often she would say, you drive me effing crazy just out of the blue. And I didn't know she felt that way about me. But this friendship is much, much different. Uh, I know that I don't drive her crazy. We talk about everything. So I did have a little bit of fear come up when I, when I moved onto her property. But it's just, it's so peaceful here. It's quite a ways out of town from the places that I work. And so yesterday I was crying about that. But I can even talk to her about that and not offend her. I'm like, please, you know, please, just please know that I'm so, so grateful that you're letting me stay on your property. I'm, it just feels overwhelming because I feel like, and then I was just like, what do I feel like? I feel like I'm far away from home because the town that I want to live in is, uh, it's about 40 minutes from here. And I went and cleaned the river house and that's in the town that I want to live in. It's through a canyon. It's by the river, the huge mountains. Well, I'm literally living, uh, I mean, at the base of a beautiful mountain right now. I'm always in the mountains. I'm in Montana. <laughs> so I was crying yesterday because because I was cleaning there and I had to leave the river. And oh, geez. And just thinking about the things that I don't have. Well, just a few short years ago, I was crying because I didn't have enough work and I hardly had any money. And then before that, I didn't have any money for years. I only had a food card. <laughs> anyway, so things have gotten gradually better. And she definitely pointed that out to me, that things have been getting better. And the reason I'm working so hard right now is more than likely so I can save up a bunch of money to have my own place. It's more than likely... So, because of the next place that I'm going to live, 
I will have to have a, a pretty large down payment or something like that. Yes, because I've just been like, is that what life is all about? Is just working every single day and not seeing my family and leaving doozer all day. <laughs> but see, we just had a, we had a, like a 10 minute talk on my way home yesterday and we both felt better. And she was feeling, she was feeling like she had a mental shit storm come in too. So there's no shame in it. It's just releasing resistance around all of those, any of those unnecessary thoughts that come in, self-defeating thoughts. And also they're reminding me, my brain is still healing from not from smoking marijuana. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I'm done with it because I want to feel life exactly like I'm supposed to be feeling life right now. I want to face things as they are. I, I, I wanted to smoke yesterday. I prayed and I said, please remove any d desire I may have to smoke marijuana. And it's magically, magically gone. And I'm watching Suits on Netflix, and the guy on there, one of the attorneys, started smoking pot again. I was just like, oh my gosh, whatever I'm going through really seems to be reflected in my outside, my, my outside world. And the fact that for the last 10 years since my awakening experience, I call it an experience because we are already awake. So I had the experience of, of awakening. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So for the last 10 years, I have just been brought to wherever the divine wants me to live next for my highest good, for whatever lessons there have been in, in where I'm living and who I'm living with. And now I'm on my best friend's property. We have such a wonderful connection, such a wonderful bond. She's my soul sister. She absolutely is. And I, I'll have to tell you the story. I know I did a long time ago, but I really want to tell you the story of how, how we met. Uh, maybe in my next video. So I'm going to my construction clean this morning, and I don't think anybody's going to be there, which is going to be very peaceful. I was crying about that the other day, too. Maybe I should get a different job <laughs> so I'm around people more. <laughs> no. I want, I'm having my own, keeping just my own business. I don't do well in just a regular setting where there's people all of the time. I'm way too empathic for that. So I am surrounded by men on a daily basis <laughs> at the construction clean, <laughs> the new build clean that I'm doing. And, um, there was a heart rock left on my car and there was, um, I don't know what he wrote it in, but in like gold letters that said love. And then there was a note with his phone number, uh, call me. And then he said, send me pictures. No, I was not going to call this guy anyway. He's younger than all, than my youngest daughter. <laughs> but you know, it's nice to get some attention like that. And, and I definitely see that that's something very new in my life is being surrounded by men. <laughs> um, Anyway, okay, Ancients, is that it? Woof. If you get bombarded by mental shit storms and, and uh, you give your attention to them and then just have horrible days and weeks and months and years, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to the Ancients and I. Uh, maybe we can help you with that. <laughs> Salt song with Mama G at gmail.com. Love you so much.